It's a beautiful morning in Sheffield, and I've been thinking about some very inspirational verses in Romans 8. Verses 15 and 16, Paul says this, You did not receive the spirit of slavery to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry, Abba, Father, for his Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirits that we are children of God. What is it to have the spirit of slavery to fear? I don't necessarily think Paul is talking about a ghost that follows people around and makes them scared. The spirit of slavery to fear. Slavery is something that's wrongfully controlling. Slavery is wrongful control. So if you had the spirit of slavery to fear, that means you're being wrongfully controlled by fear. It doesn't mean you can't experience fear. It doesn't mean it's wrong to experience fear. I think it's kind of like a lens that you see life through and you let it control your life. And if, you, if you're getting scared about things that haven't even happened yet, things that could happen, and, and you let that rule your life, it controls your relationships and your decisions, that's the spirit of fear that we didn't receive. But Paul says instead, we receive the spirit of adoption. Adoption can sometimes be seen as a negative thing because a child's not been brought up by their natural parents, so something, something must have gone wrong. But I believe when a child is adopted, they are being brought up by their true and rightful parents. So if you've adopted a child, that child is truly your child to be good parent to. And if you've been adopted, those parents are truly your parents. Paul puts it this way. He says, the spirit of adoption causes us to cry, Abba, Father. That's a really intimate, loving address between the adopted children of God and, and the eternal Father God. Adoption is not a second best. And if you've adopted or you've been adopted, I just want to commend you. It's an amazing relationship. Adoption is beautiful. It's intended to be a deep, meaningful, truthful relationship between parents and children to the point that Paul, the church leader, uses it to explain our relationship with God. Another thing that we can take from this is it says that his Holy Spirit bears witness or testifies with our spirits that we're children of God. There's an area of Christian philosophy that's interested in this experience of the Holy Spirit, God's bearing witness with our spirits and giving us a whole new grounds for our beliefs, entirely independent of arguments and evidence. So if you have difficult questions or struggles in your faith, you can still hold those struggles with complete integrity and know that you're a loved child of God because you have an entirely independent way of knowing that he loves you through the Spirit.